time, I yield back. Chair, thanks. The gentleman generally yields back. Chair, recognize the gentleman from Pennsylvania for questions. Thanks, Mr. Chairman. I appreciate it. You know, I think that there's only one question that we have to deal with here, and that's that's one question only. Can the executive branch ignore a, a subpoena that's not only lawful but valid? That's the one question we're here to decide. Everything else is just a, a complete distraction. Uh, Chairman Comer, would you like to talk about that? I mean, look, we are the congressional overseers of the executive branch. We have checks and balances in our system. That's the way it was set up. And uh, we have requested this, these uh, audio recordings. Uh, the reason uh, that we stumbled upon President Biden's mishandling of classified documents throughout the, uh, the, uh, the Biden influence peddling investigation was there were, there were emails on the laptop that we now know was 100 percent legitimate because that was the major piece of evidence in the in the court case that uh, Mr. McGovern cited a dozen times, it seemed like, in, in, in the last 30 minutes, there were emails on there that looked like they could be potentially be classified documents. And, and the, the thing that the investigation has revealed is with the tens of millions of dollars that the Bidens have taken in from our adversaries around the world, there was never a business purpose. You know, they say, the media will say, or the Democrats will say, well, in uh, Hunter Biden and Jim Biden, or Joe Biden's business dealings, what business was it they were in? Because we haven't ever found a legitimate business. Uh, the business, according to uh, at least two people who testified under oath, and that would be Bob Alinsky and, and Jason Galanis, was they were selling, and three, counting Devin Archer, three former Biden associates said the business was selling the Biden brand. That is called influence peddling. Were the classified documents, were any of the classified documents used in the Biden influence peddling scheme? That's the question the Oversight Committee has with respect to the classified documents. And look, I think it's this is about transparency. Uh, w again, and I, I can't say this enough, it's not just the House Republicans requesting these documents. The Associated Press, CNN, ABC, CBS, NBC, Bloomberg, The Washington Post, that's their people. Their people want it too. The American people want it. Poll after poll shows the American people want transparency. So if there's nothing wrong with the tapes, then just disclose them. Mr. Well, hold on, Mr. Rath, I'm not, you know, you know me, I'm not going to leave you hanging like that. If you want to, go ahead. Well, but I just wanted to be certain that this constitutes the chairman's endorsement for uh, every petition by the Washington Post and ABC and CBS and CNN to get information. For example, they were asking for all the information that Donald Trump was suppressing for several years and wouldn't give to Congress. Do you agree it should be released because the media wanted it? I, I, what was the question, Mr. Askin? Uh, well, I, I'll write it out for you. <laughs> Mr. Nadler. I, I just want to point out that the, uh, contrary to what uh, the distinguished chairman said, the uh, House uh, Republicans didn't, quote, stumble on Biden documents. Uh, President Biden's personal uh, um, counsel found the documents at the Penn Biden Center and voluntarily uh, then reported them to the FBI. This cooperation was one reason that uh, Special Counsel Hur declined to indict Biden. And I would contrast this with uh, President Trump, who has hidden and, ref you know, who, who refused to uh, uh, to turn over documents, who necessitated uh, the court to order a search warrant, and who apparently hid uh, documents uh, from the agents uh, uh, executing the search warrant. And that's why um, 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 the, pre the, the special counsel in the one case, President Trump, has uh, asked the grand jury and got a grand jury to indict him. And in the other case, uh, with President Biden, uh, Mr. Hur declined to uh, ask a grand jury to indict and said uh, there, there was no crime. I mean, I, I get what you're saying, Mr. Nadler. I would just counter with the fact that the decision not to prosecute President Biden was because of the demeanor that was seen on the tape and, the that is not and there was true. an assessment. That is not true. If you read the report, there are many reasons cited for not, uh, uh, um, for the decision not to indict. And I mentioned a few of them a moment ago. There are many reasons cited, and it, I think it's a 231 or 261 page report. Um, and that's why I called the comment about the President's cognitive ability gratuitous, because that was not uh, 
any one of the major reasons given in the report for declining to indict? It's, it's my understanding that one of the major reasons was that, and it was in the report, is that President Biden would present to a jury, as I believe the quote was a well-meaning, um, I, I forget the exact word, but, well, but basically you, that he doesn't know what's going on. I recommend you read have. the report and see all the other reasons why, the, why they declined to indict. Okay. But in particular, the cooperation, um, uh, the cooperation that I just mentioned, that it was the uh, President Biden's personal counsel who found the documents and at, at the Penn Biden Center and voluntarily uh, uh, reported them to the FBI. Okay, I, but again, it was the demeanor and how he would present to a jury that he'd be sympathetic, that people would think he doesn't have control, uh, mental acuity enough. And me, the fact say, that it's- Let me, well, let me well, say this. Well, no, we got to, Mr. Nass, we got to talk. This. I don't, don't, don't want to get into a we debate. We cannot talk over I, each other. I, I, please, okay. please, gentlemen will suspend. The clerk cannot keep up with us when we cross talk. So let's, one at a time. Let, yeah, let, let, I, okay. Let Go me ahead. say this. That quote has been used and may have been put there for all I know to question the president's cognitive ability. I don't know why he put that in. But the fact is there are going to be two debates and the public will be able to judge the president's cognitive ability and for that matter, the former president's cognitive abilities. There's no point debating it here. Okay, okay. And I'm trying to, I'm not trying to bring this into a larger debate, but we're totally focused here. If we're talking about the privilege issue and whether or not they have a privilege, uh, they've, I believe they have waived that by providing the transcript, number one. Number two, when the report, now you, you can say it's not controlling or not, but the report does talk about his demeanor. It would be nice to see the tape from, so we could assess the demeanor ourselves. And again, I would say the privilege has been waived because you handed over the executive branch, not you specific, specifically, but the executive branch has handed over the transcript. I mean, that's just my read of the situation. Mr. Grass, before I, Mr. Comer, Chairman Comer is trying to talk to you, so I, I will I, give you time, I promise. Mr. Chair, or Chairman. I just wanted to, to say this again. I mentioned in my opening statement. Our timeline doesn't match up with the White House's narrative of their timeline of the discovery of the documents. And one of the things the White House is obstructing is our ability to interview several of the White House employees about the specifics of when those Class, mishandled classified documents were discovered. I just want to point that out. Yeah, thanks, Mr. Chairman. Um, Ms. Raskin, well, and then we'll it, go to Ms. Hageman. Mr. Thank Raskin. you, Mr. Raskin. It's really more a question for you, because you, you, you make an interesting point. You assert that the, whatever privilege the president had, and obviously that was something that was expansively invoked by Donald Trump, but you're saying if he had an executive privilege, it was waived when he turned over the written transcript. But does that argument depend on the written transcript being uh, a faithful transcription of the oral statements? If so, it would seem to defeat the point. I mean, well, well, let's well, say well, if they're well, really well, different, then he's asserting executive privilege, presumably, for the 0.001% of it that hasn't been turned over yet, mm -hmm. right? I, so I get what you're saying, but I would say that if the transcript is different, that's all the more reason to get the audio or the, the audio visual uh, of it so we can see if the transcript meets the audio visual. But the fact, if you are you implying that it was the transcript was doctored? No, but that's the paranoid theory that's been floated today by some people. But no, I, I think that's ridiculous. Um, I, in other words, I think those two arguments cut against each other. The idea that the privilege has been waived depends on the idea that the written transcript is actually a faithful record of what was spoken. And I haven't seen any evidence, certainly, that there's any difference um, in the two. So, um, you know, I, I just, I think we are really splitting hairs here. I mean, it's kind of an amazing thing that we would think about holding the Attorney General of the United States in contempt in contempt for not giving the audio version when we have all these people walking around who've never given any testimony at all in answer to subpoenas and it doesn't seem to trouble, you know, at least your side of the aisle. No, I get, I get your argument, but I, I mean, again, if you've already handed over the transcript itself, I would still argue that you've already waived the privilege of then holding on to the audio visual of the transcript. I mean, that's just my understanding. I understand you're saying we're splitting here, hairs here, but it, Ms. Hageman, uh, yes, a couple of things. To conflate the outcome of the two cases between Hunter Biden and President